All right, another Maverick Sport video we got going on today. So as you can see, a lot looks different on this thing. Check that roof line out. Got a new set of whips on the back. Made a sunshade up front. So I'll go ahead and get into this thing and we'll so show off some of the changes that took place over the last month or so. All right, I'll just kind of go first here. So as you can see, um, the XRC model had orange stickers on the doors, that RC sticker. And uh, well, let me just kind of show you. It kind of sticks out close to the tire line, maybe even a little bit close to the fender line. So that thing's always brushing up against trees. We do a lot of close trails around home here, um, you know, northeastern part of the country. So we get a lot of tight trails, trees, branches, things like that. We don't do a lot of open dune riding. So anyway, that door got all scratched up. Let me walk around to the driver's side door here. You can see that one too. So the doors got all scratched up. This door skin just comes off with about six torque screws on the inside and then it's just plastic skin. Um, so I took it off and we have a friend of ours that does dirt track race car lettering. Um, we'll just name drop him, Ed Miller. You know, I don't know if anybody knows him, you know, whatever. But he's done a lot of cars. He does pretty awesome work. And he just took a picture of the old sticker that was on there and then just printed new stickers. And we chose to go with flat black, which I think looks pretty sweet. I'll walk back around to the other side and we'll look at it a little bit closer. Yeah, so I think it matches everything pretty well. I kind of like the orange because it was flashy, but there's already a lot of orange on it. I thought about just getting all these panels here wrapped, um, but this was virtually free, you know, 20 bucks, and my dad paid him the 20 bucks, so it didn't really cost me anything, but um, pretty impressive, pretty nice stickers. We'll see how it holds up. It's went through one ride and one wash, and they definitely don't come off at all. Uh, but yeah, got a nice look to it now. So we'll kind of go over the second thing that catches your eye here is the roof line. Before, the uh, the roof literally was probably up to about here. Yeah, so pretty crazy difference, you know, from then till now. So back here, I cut about, I don't know, six inches out of this tube that comes here, and then maybe about two inches out up here, quite a bit out of this pipe here. And now you can see that the roof line's nice and flat and level and doesn't look, you know, like it's raised up all the way up here. It doesn't look ridiculous. So that was a big change. Had to bend the front there. And I also uh, put a couple handles in here too because it just looks cool. And it's nice to be able to reach up and grab a handle. So got a couple handles on the cage. Um, factory windshield still fits, which was a big, a big selling point that I needed to do. So really about a weekend worth of cutting, grinding, and welding. And a single can of Chevy Orange spray paint matched perfect. <clears throat> had to do a little bit of roof mods in the bracket to get it to bolt back in the back but as you can see you know that's the factory roof also and that was one of the things is wanted to make sure that the roof fit i did chop the roof back here a little bit yeah so i took i don't know maybe two inches out of the bottom of the roof here and i still got to buff it up a little bit but cut that roof line up in the back so have a little bit more visibility plus it just looks nice and clean in my opinion so next, let's go over the lights. Um, before I had a set of two foot whip lights back here and they burn out. So I reached out to Woody's Lights, who is who we bought them from in the beginning. Uh, they had a lifetime warranty. So let's go over them first while I'm talking about them. There we go. Hopefully the camera picks a lot of that up. I wish I could shut my uh, ceiling LED lights off, but I can't find the remote. So we're gonna have to just deal with that. But. As you can see, those whips are pretty impressive. I got a set of whips in the back, four foot whips in the back, and then an eight pod rock light set that goes all underneath there. And they change to any combination of anything you could imagine. Let me try and get up close here. So you can see, you know, they, they kind of chase. And while we're doing it, let me play around with the remote and I'll see if I can get a couple cool different um, modes to show up. All right, so let's go ahead and change this around and see if we can show off some of it. So it changes to any color combination that you want, but then, yeah, it does all kinds of crazy different things. Like it'll, it can even stack the lights, which I thought was pretty cool looking. All 
Maybe I'll insert a little bit of music here to go with the lights. See if I can get to some cooler modes. There we go. So anyway, uh, Woody's lights, he's been awesome. I see every time I have an issue, I just reach right out to the owner, Alan himself. Um, if you have any parts that go bad after you buy them, he'll literally overnight them so you have them in a few days. Uh, I've had a controller go bad that was probably my fault anyway, and he just sent me a new one. Um, with my two-foot whips, he would have sent a whole new set back uh, free, but I wanted to upgrade to these four-foot whips, so we just had a little bit of an upgrade price. I sent everything back, and he sent me a brand new kit. So super impressive, really nice. Uh, really good quality and we've had one ride on them. You know, these things are nice and flexible. They, as you can see, they go all over. Yeah, so I'll turn the lights back on. Uh, but anyway, Woody's Lights Whips. Uh, I might put a, a link in the description just to show it off. I'll show these rock lights off too, just while we're here, but they're crazy bright. You know, I got a pod there, pod underneath each corner of the tire. Um, got them underneath the seat up underneath the dash, and then we'll see if it shows it off here. I put one underneath the grill too. Looks pretty cool. Thing looks pretty mean up front. I don't know why. It's some something about that light reflection under the front grill, but looks pretty cool. See how well the camera shows up there, but my old uh, switches were just kind of getting covered in mud and everything. So I just got two new switches from Amazon. Anybody can get them there. I imagine everybody knows that, but in case you don't, they're like $9 each for a switch. They come pre-wired in the back. Uh, they light up when you turn it on. So pretty easy stuff there. All right, so the next thing I wanted to go over is the sunshade that I made. So I don't know how many people know that, uh, you know, when you take the windshield off of these Maverick Sports, there's a bunch of brackets that show up underneath the hood there, or up underneath the factory roof. And it just looks stupid. You know, it looks like the thing has a big receding hairline or something. Um, just looks ugly, doesn't look very clean. So I thought about making a whole flat roof out of metal. And because of the way that this rear bar is in the roll cage, it didn't look like it was easily doable. So I made this diamond plate thing. Well, I thought it up. My buddy made it. Thomas Fabricating. I might put a link in the description for that too. Like I said, nobody watching this probably even has a clue. But so, um, you know, it's just a piece of diamond plate with three different bends. You know, it's bent in about an inch and a half to where I bolted it to the roof. And also, let me go up underneath here. Bolted it to the uh, roll cage also. So it's not going to be flapping around or, you know, be flimsy all stainless stuff. Um, so yeah, it goes in an inch and a half, comes down about four inches, and then just has like a 10 degree bend, you know, an inch there. But as you can see, it matched the profile pretty nice, flat blacked it, and it just gives it a nice extra look up front. So the other thing while we're talking about it, maybe since the last video that I did, I had a big light bar that was on the front. It was from Harbor Freight. Um, also with the two foot rear whips that were back here, I had a couple light pods that I had wired up for reverse lights. So although it was all really nice and cool, we've had this thing almost two years and we've, well, 21, two, three. Yeah, a couple years. Two years and seven months we've owned it. It's been that long. Uh, 1,971 miles and 148 hours. And what I was really getting at is we use that light bar and those reverse lights like maybe twice ever. I mean, they work great and they are cool, but I don't know. I figured with the kind of chopping the roof like that, um, you know, putting these nice whips on, flat blacking the, the, uh, the doors, adding that sunshade, just kind of the look. I didn't like the light bars sticking up front and I didn't like the reverse lights in the back. So I just took them off. I gave the light bar to a guy at work and the reverse lights I was just gonna give away until I kind of looked up front here and the factory stock bumper has two holes. And I don't know, it kind of looks kind of neat. You know, I thought, why get rid of them? There are super bright and the factory headlights, as anybody knows, 
aren't that great on these things. So I just decided to, uh, to put them up front on the front bumper. So again, just like I showed earlier, those switches on Amazon are about 10 bucks. And this one, this Sasquatch lights is actually what it was. But it came, the switch was 13 bucks, or the switch with a whole wiring harness with a relay and inline fuse was also 13 total. So we bought the switch. Um, I wired it all up, fed it through in front of the radiator, up underneath here, and then down through uh, a rubber grommet. So super clean install. Let me turn the lights off and I'll kind of show you what those look like too. So it's kind of hard to tell um, because it's already pretty light in here, but they're they're pretty nice piercing, you know, spotlights. So if we were in the woods and needed to, to have a little bit, bit of extra light, they are nice. And I wired them up. I don't know if it shows it here, but so they were a two-way light. They had a halo around the outside and the light, so I just wired it all together so it showed, you know, the, the halo and the spotlights. But yeah, kind of looks nice. Let's see what it looks like with the headlights on too. Must have to have the key on. Huh? Yeah, here we go. Should be pretty good. That's high beams, low beams. No, yeah, I might just use them as the headlights. I don't know, but overall, the whole look is pretty nice. Again, man, I do love the whips. All right, so uh, about the last thing to go over here that I did, we covered the roof, the whips, tuned up the rock lights, uh, the door stickers, the sunshade up front here, um, the new pod lights up front. So that was a whole lot of changes there. So a couple other things that I did is ride height adjustment. This thing was all over the place. So I watched a couple shock therapy videos. I would really like to get a set of dual rate springs for this. Um, I don't really want to bite the bullet and spend the eight, nine hundred dollars, but that's my only complaint is the kind of the chatter, choppy jolt you all over when you go slow ride. But so I adjusted the ride height really, and that's all with the um, preload adjustment here. So I just, you know, take the weight off of it and you kind of adjust both sides the same. So shock therapy said that loaded up, this thing was supposed to be about 14 inches ground height. Uh, the back was at like 16 and the front was you know, maybe 14 and a quarter. So it was kind of all over the place. So I set the ride height all over. Um, yeah, other than that, this thing's looking good. Getting ready for a Hatfield trip. So we're gonna go down to Pinnacle Creek, Indian Ridge and the Warrior System for Memorial Day weekend. And we're gonna hit the Rock House, Devil's Ands and Buffalo Mountain for 4th of July. So a couple big trips coming up, probably put a couple hundred miles worth of, uh, worth of riding on each weekend there. Um, the only thing that I do have to do is it is due for all the maintenance. So I've did a video on that before, but maybe I'll just record a little bit of it when I get there, do kind of a review thing, but it is due for an oil and filter change, front diff fluid change, and for the uh, transmission gearbox fluid change. And also we are gonna do a steering rack. So you can kind of hear that play. I don't feel like jacking it up to show you, but the rack is actually worn out on this thing, which is kind of common when you get some miles on things. I mean, it's got about 2000 miles on it. So we are gonna do a steering rack. That should be coming up here in maybe the next week or two. Um, but other than that, I think this thing is ready and maybe we'll get some pretty cool riding videos coming up for you here. But that's about the end of it for this. And thanks for watching.